Hey YouTube, uh, I just wanted to make a update video today because I'm going to be doing, it's not really an upgrade, it's more of a horizontal move, but uh, this is my PF Sense box. It's been running in the same configuration for two and a half years, it's been perfectly fine. Uh, it's actually still fine. Uh, the current uptime is 37 days, 40 minutes, and 54 seconds. Um, it has an update that's available, but I'm not going to do that until after I uh, deal with this stuff. But uh, basically, this uh, machine's been very reliable. I haven't had any problems with it, uh, but I want to swap out the motherboard because I want to use this board for a different project. So I'm going to go ahead and show what we're switching to. All right, so I shut down the uh, PF Sense machine. Uh, I haven't really touched it in... I was, uh, since I've moved, I haven't done anything to it. Um, it's it's been perfectly reliable. It's running that uh, Gigabyte C. Well, we'll look and see when we actually get it off. Uh, there's the, there's other videos of it up. It's like it's a Intel Celeron board integrated uh, with with an integrated CPU. So what I'm going to end up replacing it with is this Super Micro X7 SPEH. This has a an old Atom, I believe it's a D525 or it's a D510, I don't remember. Um, in either case, it's a, it's a slow CPU, but the CPU usage on this machine has never really been above, I don't know, at most 20%. Uh, on, this has dual Intel NICs on it. This one had Realtek uh, NICs, so I had a, a PCI card installed. I don't like Realtek, especially under... Uh, under FreeBSD uh, or under BSD, the drivers are a little bit uh, suspect from time to time, and I, I just prefer the stability of uh, the Intel NICs. Uh, there's better throughput in my experience, and all that. Uh, we also have four gigabytes of G Skill DDR2 memory in this, so that will be more than enough. It had just like some random two sticks of six, uh, two sticks. One I think was a a two gigabyte. And one is a 4 of DDR3 that it had in here before. And uh, unfortunately, my internet connection is not fast enough here. I have a Comcast cable. It's like 170 down. So it's pretty fast. Um, in fact, it's probably a little faster than what this PCI bus could actually handle. But it wasn't really fast enough to worry about uh, so hopefully we'll get a little bit of extra speed out of this as well this is just the nick that I had in there for the uh, Intel uh, it's not that dusty in there considering I haven't really cleaned it out in a long time but um, let's take a look at the memory we had in here I think they're just random sticks I had lying around we have Hynix, this is four gigabytes of DDR3, and then this is another two gigabytes. I think I got those from a Lenovo machine or something like that that I was scrapping. Alright, so uh, the hard drives have been fine, the smart data still shows us fine. Uh, pretty much, I don't do a ton of logging on this machine, it does do some. Uh, but they don't get used that hard, so they've been in reasonably good shape. The board is a Gigabyte GAC1037UN, for the record, and uh, it's been perfectly fine. Uh, I'm going to be using this board for something else, and uh, the reason I'm actually going through the trouble of switching this out is that I just had this Super Micro board. Uh, from somewhere, I'm not even sure where. Uh, I think I bought it a couple years ago with the intent of using it for a router and I just never did. So I thought it would be a good idea to uh, update this. I'm going to try to just uh, do this as a plug and play swap, meaning uh, BSD is usually pretty good about picking up new uh, drivers and since these both have Intel chipsets I believe, uh, there probably shouldn't be too much of a problem. Just uh, swapping this out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those screws out there. The wire, the cable management, as you can see in this case, uh, is horrific. There's really nowhere. I, I 
I don't even know if they, a module power supply wouldn't even really help that much in this case, but uh, there's just not a lot of room in here, so I'm going to work on disentangling this and all that, and I'll probably get a monitor out, and we'll just see if we can do an in-place upgrade or not. If not, I'll have to go find a USB stick. I, I did just, since my internet is down while I'm doing this, I did make sure I downloaded uh, the latest PFSense ISO, so hopefully we won't need it. I'd rather just keep the same installation. Alright, so this this is the uh, the board extracted. There's a good amount of dust starting to build up in the fan. It's actually part of the reason that I wanted to swap over to this board is that it doesn't have a fan. It's passively cooled, so it should be a little bit cleaner. Unfortunately, the Silverstone case does not have any sort of dust filter on the outside, which is kind of annoying. I might... I don't know, this fan is blowing out right now. I, I might just leave it as it is. Uh, there's a good amount of dust under the board. I'm not real sure how it so much got under the board, but it did uh, in the inside of the case here. So uh, this is going to be, it's not fun exactly uh, working with this. I'm going to try to do, uh, to get the uh, headers, the, the front panel header stuff for the power button and all that hooked up outside of the case and then drop it in. I need to go find a new CMOS battery. Uh, this does not have one in it, I just noticed, so I'm going to go look for one. Alright, so I just wanted to mention a couple of other things about this uh, board before I put it in. It's difficult to see. Uh, there is a 4X PCI Express slot here. I will probably end up getting another uh, LAN card or something for that in the future, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I can't find the um, low profile uh, blank that goes here right now, so I'm just going to have to leave that empty for the moment until I find that. Um, it, as I said, is passively cooled. It has a total of six uh, SATA, uh, probably two uh, ports on it, which is very nice. This is apparently some sort of accessory power. It probably, I would assume, is a way to route power to power drives through the board. A lot of server boards have that. Um, it also has, it looks like two, there's a CPU fan header and a system fan header. Uh, and it does not have the extra four pin power supply for the CPU. So the CPU apparently requires less voltage than the previous one did. Uh, it has like a lot of these server boards uh, USB so you can if you're running a you know a hypervisor or something that can run off of a USB thumb drive uh, you can stick one right in there and uh, it has some actual physical jumpers on it which is kind of strange to see. Um, They're for, it looks like it's for LAN related stuff. Hmm. Huh. Anyway, um, that's about it for this board. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to get this thing, uh, front panel connectors going, and we'll see if we can get it to boot. Alright, so I managed to get everything kind of crammed back in here. Uh, that PCI Express slot is not usable. This is not a mini ITX, uh, board. I didn't really think about that before I uh, installed it. I got a monitor going here and I'm going to turn these lights so there's less glare. Now I have no idea. It was very hard to see if I've uh, got these front panel LEDs hooked up correctly or not. Evidently, I must not. Alright, so I'm not worrying about the LEDs for the moment because the little silk screening on there is confusing and misleading. Let's see if we can get our VGA going here. It beeped itself alive. The hard drives are going. Why do I not have any picture? Oh, we got a green light. Oh, there we go. Super micro. Yay. These server boards take longer to beat up. Uh, the uh, to beat up to uh, boot up. It looks like it's going to try to boot here. I don't have a keyboard handy. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to try to boot, so 
if it does indeed succeed in booting, what I'll do is I'm going to um, go online and uh, actually I think I have a manual saved on my computer for this board. Find the manual for the board so I can more easily figure out the front panel connectors. Try to find a blanking plate for the back of this thing. And uh, I wish I had some shorter SATA cables too, but I don't. They're just ridiculously long for this case. But it is what it is. And uh, yeah, this thing seems to be up and running. We'll see if we can get it uh, going on the uh, online and stuff in a minute here. It's much quieter. All right, so I dug out a random uh, USB keyboard and uh, the system booted just fine. It looks like it even remembered my WAN and LAN ports and everything, so I think it doesn't even realize there's a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot and see if we can get into the uh, the BIOS for this board and just make sure everything's configured the way I'd like it to be. Is it going to give me a system halt here? It's weird it being so quiet. You won't be able to hear it on the video, but uh, I didn't realize those drives were quite as noisy as they are. I should probably replace them while I have it all taken apart. But I kind of don't feel like t doing it. Uh, PF Sense will reboot this. Will okay. Yes. And yeah, it actually plays the little songs. The other board didn't play the little PF Sense songs when it boots up and shuts down. So that's kind of nice that that works correctly, because. Uh, it takes quite a while to boot up PF Sense. It's kind of nice to have this thing runs headless and it's too far away from my key, my KVM to uh, conveniently hook up to. So it's usually just uh, completely headless. So it's kind of nice to have uh, a little bit of a confirmation that it's actually working correctly. PF Sense does take a while to actually shut down as well. I would like it to get up in there. But um, I'm thinking about buying a. Um, one of those PCI, uh, it's like a ribbon cable that goes in the PCI slot, PCI Express slot, and you can, because uh, this this uh, case actually does have a full length slot that you could use with a one of those riser ribbon cable thingies. So I might end up looking into getting one of those because I could probably throw Wi-Fi in here and get rid of my airport then. Because she's a little long in the tooth. Alright, system going down immediately. Should probably mean somewhat immediately here, PF Sense. I know you're running on an atom, but. Move some of this crap out of the way. Well, I have a few things I have, as you can see, like there's snort and squid and. Uh, some stuff running on there, so it takes a little while to actually boot. Now, I do not remember at all on Super Micro, micro Boards. I, it's either F1, F2, or Delete to get into the BIOS, so we're going to just have to say a little prayer. Delete runs it up. Okay. Alright, so what do we got? We have the boot stuff's all been fine. CPU configuration. So this is a D510, 1.66 gigahertz. Did it show the memory in there? Probably don't really need most of that USB stuff, but it doesn't hurt really anything to leave it on either, I guess. So there's really not a ton available to see here. Where CPU is running at 40 degrees. System temperature is 35 degrees. It all seems just fine. Probably nothing in the event log, right? Keyboard not functional crap from... I wonder if these are accurate. A lot of keyboard errors. This was running headless, I would say, for a long time. And... I suppose... oh wait, there we go, there's our 4 gigs of memory. Yeah, I suppose that pretty much uh, wraps things up for this. So I'm going to go ahead and let this boot up one more time, just to make sure it goes through its whole boot up fine. And uh, button it up, 
and get it back in its position and we'll see how how it's running then. So we've got our login screen here. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. beeps when I uh, log in. It didn't used to do that. It's kind of interesting. So you can see here we still do not have a IP address. For, I think I have to reset my cable modem before that will work. But uh, we have the Intel Atom CPU. Uh, the memory is all good. It looks like with nothing we have about 10% CPU usage. It's probably still dealing with boot up routines and stuff. So that's probably pretty good. We'll uh, try to get the cable modem reset here and see if we can get an IP address. Alright, so everything is back up and running again. We have obtained a public IP address. Uh, let's see, this is uh, my video game YouTube channel here. Let's just choose... And you can see here, getting good input, throughput and CPU usage did go up to 40% here when I'm actually streaming a video so that's a lot more than it used to be but it still seems like it should probably be more or less alright make sure we're on 1080p yeah we're on 1080p video and CPU usage is down at 3% now, so I don't know what that spike was about. It could have been anything. It was probably just checking updates or whatever. So, uh, the other machine had 6 gigabytes of memory. This only has 4. I didn't need 6 in the other one. I just randomly had 6, so uh, this should all be fine. I do want to run a speed test here. I'm just going to use the, uh, the Google speed test. Let's just see how it goes. Of course, my internet is so uh, variable, depending on the time of day and stuff. Like 96, I don't know if that's actually meaningful or not. The upload speed seems a little bit better, but again, it's so random how it decides how it wants to actually go. But that's reasonably good, so it didn't make it worse, I guess. So um, I'm going to actually be revamping my entire network. I already rebuilt my Windows Home Server, or it's not a home server anymore, it's a Windows 2000, uh, Server 2016 server. That's already been rebuilt. Um, I What else did I do? I rebuilt one of my PF Sense machines, and we will be doing the other one on screen. I have a new um, build that I'm going to be doing for my main machine uh, with a Intel i7-77. Uh, 100k retire this machine that I'm using right now um, and a few more things coming up so anyway uh, this was a pretty straightforward and simple thing uh, I have been like I said using that other board for about two and a half years it was fine uh, I'm gonna get the the update rolling I guess here let's cancel that uh, but uh, yeah it's it's a uh, it's been very stable and good we'll see how this goes that other board is going to be used for a, a, an emulation machine that I'm going to be working on later. So we'll see how that goes as well. And as always, I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.